if you were a young bloke in Newcastle dreaming about playing in the big time, you had to go to Sydney. The Knights come in and gave all of us the ability <coughs> to sleep in your own bed at home and dream about playing in the big time for your own, your own area. And that unlimited possibilities and that dream is what the Knights created. Everyone that runs out in that jersey today has to understand what's gone before them. Uh, the history, it's got a, a lot of uh, character about this place. Newcastle in general as a community has got a lot of character about it. Um, and that's the characteristics I like to see displayed in the field. Uh, never giving up, um, understanding what a battle is and, and how, you, uh, how, you how you can come through the other side of it. And, um, and that's what the fans want. They just want everyone to, to rip in and, and go the hardest for as long as they can. Many of the people who came to the games actually came to watch the opposition. They wouldn't travel for a couple of years because they didn't want to be embarrassed away from home. Yeah, back when we started in 88, I have no doubt that uh, the rugby league world probably underestimated us. Because they had no idea of that mental tenacity and toughness and how much rugby league is a part of us. But at home, in a big crowd, they came to support the toughness of, of how we played. And they got a rude shock. I mean, at the start, yeah, we didn't win many games, but that physical attribute came out in us. That first game when they ran out was just absolutely sensational. The roar of the crowd, I knew they'd do it. They have a background in league in this valley, and they're used to having good league players in front of them. And they appreciate everything that happened that day. And uh, we gained a reputation within a matter of months. And as the years rolled on, that reputation only got stronger and stronger. Appointing the coach, Alan McMahon, was the best decision we made because he set the foundations. He determined what sort of players he wanted. They had to be tough. I guess some of the principles early on were, were really based around um, the toughness that the team was required to play with. Um, you know, certainly not the most talented or the most skillful team early days, but uh, a lot of very tough characters. They had to be young and they had to want to work hard. Work for each other, I think they're some of the standards that you know, in any team uh, are important, but I think early on we really hung our hat on that type of stuff. You know, we had limited resources and limited facilities, but we made do with what we had and that's what we're given and uh, we, we didn't have too much, but, you know, what we did have was plenty of heart and plenty of courage. The team and the club evolved over a decade or more where we then saw some of these tremendously talented players come into our club like Andrew and Matthew Johns, who probably changed the way uh, this team played and also how other teams played, uh, which is a, a huge compliment to the game. Uh, so we then had uh, a real balance of, of skill uh, and speed and toughness. Special relationship between the town and the club is the fact that this club represents the town. Not only the town, but the towns up the valley as well and up into the New England. Their standards um, are roll your sleeves up and and do the tough stuff and, and do it well. We've had numerous players spend long careers at our club and you, know, you walk around town, they still hold themselves really, really well. They're, they're really humble, really honest, engaged with the community. And um, I think that's, that's, that's a really important part of the club. Resilience, um, and I think it's a trait of this club that we don't give up, that we hang in there no matter what, and we give it our all. Parry's the first name I think of is Steve Former in that first year. Steve played well above his weight. Inspiring, well, Paul the Chief Harrigan is the most inspiring Newcastle Knight I think I've ever seen. And still to this day, he's, he has a presence when he walks into a room. Ambition. The club could be anything it wants to be. It's got the right people in the right places and um, with the right things in mind, and that's to see this club go forward. And um, with the support of the community, there's nothing stopping us. Right from the start, to be the player other players wanted to play with has been our credo. It's simple and it's a truth that we've all stuck by. And throughout the years, it hasn't diminished, it's actually grown and grown and grown. And in that simplicity, it says so many things about what you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to do it. I think it's wonderful and it'll be here for a long time, if not forever. Yeah, the greatest Newcastle Knights moment in my, my lifetime is, is the 97 Grand Final. Manly, they were the top team for so, so long. 
mean, the way the game finished in the last play of the game with, with Andrew Johns and Darren Albert, it, it sent goose, goosebumps down my spine and it still does today watching, watching that footage back. Defeating Western Suburbs in the semi-final in 1992, 25-0. When we got into the playoffs for the first time in 92, I was a captain and that took five years of, of hard work and dedication to get everyone and I think you know, the town really responded to that. Well, I think I'm most proud of the fact that they've made their mark in the game. This club has won two competitions. That was something we never dreamed of early on. And as well as that, I've got to say, we produced the best football I've seen in my life. The Newcastle way is getting all that uniqueness and all those things that we stand for, packing it together and truly believing in it. I mean, success comes from within, doesn't come from without so it's about not looking outside the circle for the answers the answers in within us you know it's within the club